I'm Dr. James Stabitz, and I'm here with OrthoHeal and the Flexio long arm immobilizer. Um, so just like I said, we're going to put on a long arm immobilizer. This is going to be for any issues with the distal humerus, the proximal or arm, or any kind of elbow issues that a patient may have. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to get my measurements. Okay, I want to get my measurements, and every product comes with a tape measure that has measurements in centimeters. We also have a chart here where you can look up what centimeters is going to indicate what size you're going to use for that particular brace. So we're doing a full arm, long arm. So what I want to do is my first measurement is going to be the circum circumference of the bicep. All right. So I'm going to go right on the top here. And so it is over right over the center of the biceps. And that's about 28 centimeters. And I'm also going to get the belly, the gaster, right here of the forearm. And that is about 24 and a half centimeters. So I have my measurements. I take a look at the chart. And I can see she is right as a medium. Okay. So I'm going to make sure that I have a full arm immobilizer medium. I'm going to check the expiration date, make sure that it has not expired. I'm going to open up the product. Take it out of the box. Now, each brace comes in a black bag. Here's this black bag is going to protect the brace, the resin, and the silicone from hardening up against any kind of outside light or any kind of inside artificial light. Now, before application, you need to make sure that whoever is applying the brace needs to read the full arm immobilizer instructions for use. This is going to give you all the information that you need about the general inspection of the brace, the key feature, the full arm immobilizer uh, intended use, indications, contraindications, patient population that this would be appropriate for, as well as if intended use, and the size chart. So make sure that whoever is applying this brace thoroughly understands the, the manufacturer's instructions to make sure that they apply the brace safely and appropriately. Also, what's going to come with every long arm is zip ties and a Velcro strap. And after we're done applying the long arm immobilizer, I'll show you what we do with the zip ties and the Velcro strap. So before I open this bag, I'm going to get gloves and I'm going to put my gloves on just to protect my skin, just in case there's any resin leakage out of the silicone. Take a pair of scissors. I'm going to cut open. And I'm going to pull the brace out of the bag. I'm going to set this bag aside. And now I want to inspect. I want to inspect and make sure that the silicone is not cracked and the resin is not leaking anywhere that could be harmful to the patient. If there is any cracks, or any leakage of the resin out of the silicone, I can just call the manufacturer and they'll send me a new one. This looks good. This looks good. You can also see on the deeper end is where we have this rubber padding. This is the rubber padding that's going to 
keep the distance and protect the patient's skin, right? Away from the resin as it starts to harden up. So now, before I apply this, I want to make sure that I inspect my patient's skin, right? And that there's no issues. I palpate, make sure that she has a brachial pulse. Make sure she has a radial pulse. Make sure she has a cap refill. And I always check bilaterally. Make sure she has adequate blood flow. Good. Can you feel this? Can you feel this? Yeah. Can you feel this? Yeah. Can you feel this? Yeah. This? Yeah. This? Yeah. The 10. She is neurovascularly intact. On that side? Yeah. Yes, it's kind of... Yeah. I mean, here. Did they hear? Or did... Yeah. Okay. She is neurovascularly intact distally, so now I'm ready to apply the long arm immobilizer. So we already did our inspection. I know my patient is neurovascularly intact distally now i need to apply the brace and you could see that there's a nice elasticity to the proximal portion for the biceps for biceps that are a little bit larger this is where my elbow pocket is going to be so the olecranon is going to sit right in this pocket and you could see also right at the forearm some people have a little bit larger forearms there's plenty of elasticity to fit those individuals as well. So what I'm going to do is, and you might need to have your patient help you. So I'm going to have my patient hold right up there. Perfect. Thank you. I'm going to make sure that the zipper is on the radial side, and we're just going to come a little bit distally. And you'll hear the zipper snap it. And you, as you're zippering up the form, I, now you don't need your patient's help anymore. All right, so now that my zipper is on, I'm going to pull just a little bit of traction just to get it away from the skin. Now, before I get to the cubital fossa, before I get to the cubital fossa, I'm going to want to protect the cubital fossa and all the sensitive structures that run through it. So I'm going to take a piece of the rubber and I'm just going to apply it right here, right in that cubital fossa, making sure my patient is at a 90 degree angle. Their thumb is up. Their thumb should be in line with their humerus. They shouldn't be over pronated or over supinated. So now I can finish zippering, add a little bit of traction and go ahead and pull all the way up. Make sure that this is nice and protected in that cubital fossa. So when I fold this up, that's going to fit in there nice and snug. Okay, you can go ahead. We'll be finished putting on the brace. Make sure your patients stay at 90 degrees. You okay? Make sure that you don't paint your patient's skin with a little bit of traction. So now, I'm at 90 degrees. I have my zipper on. My cubital fossa is nice and protected and all the sensitive structures in there. The medial and lateral epicondyle, which are also sep um, sensitive areas, they're also protected. And I'm nice and snug on the biceps region. And I'm nice and snug on the forearm region. Now, as you're inspecting, you might want to ask your patient if the zipper is uncomfortable for them. If so, you can always take a piece of this rubber and put it underneath the zipper to add a little bit more cushion. Now, as you're inspecting, and you're making sure that everything is nice and snug, but not painful. You want to make sure that the zipper here on the forearm isn't flipped isn't flip down. 
that we flipped up so it sits on top of the zipper straps. This is nice and straight on the radius. The top zipper is going straight up the center of the humerus. If she sticks her thumb straight up, it should be directly in line with the humerus. She's not over pronating. She's not over supinating. And now I need to take my zip ties that come with every long arm immobilizer. And I'm going to place them here on the forearm area. And I'm going to intertwine it with the top part. And I'm not going to fully tighten it just yet. I just want to get it in there. And I want to make sure that this stays at 90 degrees. And so I'm going to do two on each side. Slide that through. Push the zip tie. Good. Just putting it in. Just putting it in there. Not tightening it up yet. Making sure everything is still in a straight line. Zipper is still comfortable. Talk to your patient. Are you doing okay? Patient's doing okay. And I'm doing the same thing on the medial portion that I just did on the lateral portion. Again, not fully tightening the zip tie yet. Make sure everything is in line. Everything is straight. And I'm going to do my last one. So I'm going to use four zip ties total. Let's hold right there. And the last thing that I'm going to do before we start to cure with the blue light is I need to put a Velcro strap around the hand to support the hand at rest, to keep the hand at rest at slight wrist extension, making sure your patient is an ulnar deviating or radial deviating or over flexing so they could develop a potential flexion contracture. We want to keep them in slight wrist extension, 15 to 20 degrees of wrist extension. I'm going to take my belt pro strap that every long arm immobilizer comes with, and I'm going to put it through this top bolt on the dorsal side of the hand, and I'm going to take the other side of the Velcro strap on the palmer side, put it through the portal, and I'm going to come in and just attach it. So now, when I start to cure, I have good support at the metacarpals. I have good support at the wrist, good support at the forearm, good support at the elbow, and the humerus is stable as well. Okay, so I have my hand is supported, my wrist, my forearm, my elbow, my humerus is protected. We're still at 9 degrees. Zipper is straight. It's not folded under. Zipper is folded up on the distal and proximal ends. We're going to make sure that we have a little bit slight wrist extension. Remember, 10, 15 degrees of wrist extension. Now, your fiction at this point might start to... Uh, make some concerns about their arm being tired or because it fit in this position for a couple minutes now. So what you could do is you could take your patient's uninjured hand and just apply it right there. And this leaves a little bit of pressure off that upper arm and that bicep so her hand can, can relax. And so now we need to get ready to cure it with the blue light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a pair of glasses to protect my eyes. And I'm also going to have my patient put on a pair of glasses to protect her eyes as well. Be you okay? Yeah. Good. All right, and now we are ready to cure. So this is the Rizzy Cure blue light, and I'm gonna turn it on, and every couple of seconds, you're gonna hear a beep. That beep is going to be your indication to move to a different site of the brace. Okay. And we're going to start at the area that is injured first. So let's just say, for instance, she has a distal humerus fracture or some sort of distal humerus issue. That's where we're going to start. So I'm going to start on the lateral aspect of her distal humerus. I'm going to turn the light on 
and I'm going to hold it there a couple of inches away from the skin, continuing to develop a rapport with the patient, making sure that they're not uncomfortable. And then as soon as I hear that beep, that's when I'm going to move to another location. And I'm going to continue that cycle until the entire cast has been covered and the entire cast has been solidified. So we're going to start right here. When I talk to my patient, are you ready? Yeah. Are you okay? I'm okay. Okay. So the light is on. I'm going to hold it at this area until I hear that beat. Here it is. And I'm going to go to the posterior end of the distal humerus. And I'm going to go to the medial aspect of the distal humerus. And now I'm going to come to the anterior region of the humerus. And now I'm going to make my way down to the forearm. Continuing to talk to the patient. How are you doing? Doing good. Okay. It's a good idea when you're curing a long arm to try to solidify around the elbow hinge first. This will take a lot of pressure off of the patient so they don't have to use their biceps to contract as much as they're holding their arm at 90 degrees. Okay, we come under deep. Patient's doing okay? Just didn't get... Now I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to feel around for any areas that I feel may need a little bit more cure. I'm okay, making sure she's at 90 degrees. Thumb is up. I still have a little bit of space right here and I can feel it's still a little soft at the central compartment of the hand. So I'm going to want to go ahead and get this area with the light again. And you could also see that the silicone is still a little wiggly in there. You want to make sure that that is nice and solidified and palpate around them. But I don't feel any other areas that that may be an issue. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my hand right here. And just shine the light, just lowering and decreasing that space in that central compartment, waiting for that beat. Good. You cut. And now I'm about to tighten up my zentives again. Just to add support for my patient that had 90 degrees, you could always cut these. Patient suit oak that. And you want to make sure that your patient can feel this. Yeah. And you feel this. Yeah. And you feel this. Yeah. Make sure your patient can feel that. This. Yeah. This. This. They are neurovascularly intact distally. Okay, so before we finish, there's a few things that we need to do. You can definitely cut the zip ties right here so they're not hanging. Just do that and cut right there. Cut that. We have two more over here. One, two. Another thing that's worth noting is that the blue light won't penetrate this Velcro. So you may still have a sensitive area over here that may need extra curing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lift up the Velcro just a little bit, turn on the blue light, and make sure 
that I get as much as that resin hardened as I possibly can. And we're going to hold that for a couple of seconds. All right, good. Now, what's important to note with this is that a lot of patients that end up getting a long arm immobilizer still want to go in the pool. They still want to go in the oceans. They still want to be able to bathe and take showers. And that's the luxury of this brace. You can do all of those things. You can get this wet. You can go in the water. You can go in the pool. You can take a bath. Now, if you go into the ocean and there's a lot of salt or you're going to a pool and there's a lot of chlorine, you're going to want to thoroughly wash that as soon as you're done. And at the same time, you're going to want to make sure and ask your patient if they start to develop any kind of allergies or any kind of adverse reactions to the brace to make sure that they contact you immediately so you can go ahead and address that. Now, nothing with the Flexio immobilizer is going to soak up and absorb moisture. And it's all going to dissipate moisture and it's going to evaporate much quicker. However, if, if it does get wet and you want to make it dry a little bit faster than just air dry, you can take a hair dryer and you could put it on the cool setting and that'll dry the, the brace relatively quickly. Okay, so it's not uncommon for a patient to have a wound that's under immobilization. So what we need to do in that scenario is we need to create a window, and that's very simple. So we take the splitter, right, and I'm going to go to the edge, each one of these holes here, and I'm just going to pull it and just snap. Very, very simple. So I've been my patient. Are you okay? Yeah. Give me a break. Not going all the way down. Make sure you don't pinch their skin. And so now I can go ahead and pull out as much as I can and continue to develop this window for the wound. And now I have a perfect window right here where I can apply wound dressing, I can clean it. If there's any other issues that we need to do to address the wound, I can do it right here with this window without really disrupting the immobilization of the elbow or the wrist. Okay, now we're ready to take this off. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to come up by the humerus, and I'm just going to unzip all the way down. I'm going to come by the forearm on the radial side here, and I'm going to unzip all the way down. I'm going to release this Velcro strap. So now this is taken care of. There you go. I'm going to pull that out. And now I'm going to take my breakers. And I'm going to come down on the posterior end, behind the triceps and the olecranon, all the way on the ulnar side of the brace here. Talk to a patient. Are you okay? Yes. It should already start to loosen up. Do you already feel it loosening up? Push. You're doing great. And you're just making your way down nice and easy. Don't rush. Good. On. Should start to get much more loose at this point. The inflation free. And then I gotta also make sure that. I cut my zip ties right here. And then on this end as well. Those are good. And now this should just be able to 
full right out. Make sure when you're done, you inspect your patient's skin. Depending on how long they were in the brace, they might have a lot of muscle atrophy. That's nothing to worry about. Patient's okay. Can you feel this? Can you feel this? This? Good. Palpate the brachial artery. Palpate the radial artery. Good blood flow. 